Hello everyone, this is Serious Trivia, and welcome back to our early game playbook series as we're covering our second Yellow Turban DLC character in He Yi, the leader of the people, in its native 190 start. He also has a 194 start. We will visit that one when we move on to A World Betrayed, which is the 194 start date. So for now, we'll still only focus on the 190, and his starting situation is complete nonsense. He is probably, hands down, the easiest faction to play in the game, and probably the best faction to play this is Total War achievement with, because his faction mechanic revolves around replenishment. His base replenishment rate is 20%. You get that at the start, and if you remember Yellow Turban Buildings from our last week's episode covering Huang Shao, by getting a Forge Building, you can get up to another 20% replenishment so in the very early game, you can enjoy up to 40% plus replenishment in your game. And he also has a lot of other mechanics that really works well with massing armies. We'll talk about all that once we jump into game. But his second specialty is that population will decrease recruitment cost. This is more of a mid to late game scenario. Obviously, it's always helpful. And he always has some nice tools to increase population as well. We'll be looking at his character traits, uh, which are pretty standard. You get two satisfaction increase traits here right off the bat, so plus nine points for all your generals. That pretty much counteracts the entirety of the legendary penalty. Relentless gives fatigue resistance for the general himself, and you can see the 4k population growth faction wide off his character background. 100 points of faction support just means the settlements you capture will have full support at the turn that you capture it, meaning there will be no public order penalties and income penalties for a few turns. Not a big deal. But what is a big deal is this 15 points of melee evasion for melee infantry. That is all the purple units in the game. And because of this trait, we can spam peasant armies super effectively with He Yi. And it's going to carry you until the mid game and then you can switch to the faction specialty unit in the Youxia, which is the unique unit that you start out with. Now, quotations around unique, because all three factions will eventually get this. You just start out with the reform ahead of time to pick up Youxia from the beginning. And Youxia can be recruited onto healers like uh, He Yi himself. And they're really great because they are unbreakable. They are purple infantry with tons of damage and a shield, and you can boost that evasion with the passive you find on your background. So those things will be great for your mid to late game. They do quite, uh, they do cost quite a lot, uh, 200 upkeep, which is kind of hard to swallow in the early game. You have much cheaper and more effective options in the peasants, but once you want to shift into those more premium late game armies, Yosa spam is very doable. You have a unique building in the village healer. This does only two things as it describes, increased population growth in local commandery and public order to kind of counteract the population public order penalty that it will bring. Um, it's a decent building. I would advise you know building it because I tend to prefer you know economic buildings. Commanderies are where you get your wealth and wealth gives you army and other powers like diplomacy, which is very shallow for the yellow turbans, but it's nice to have money. More arm, more money you have, the more armies you can have. Uh, you have eight the wounded. It's an occupation option. Uh, it basically will increase the population growth and income from commerce for a bit after you occupy a new settlement. Uh, it's the standard first option that you would do. So nothing too crazy here. This is typically what you would do. It's just a nice added bonus on top of that. We start out with one of the most powerful characters, who's called the most powerful, in He Man. He's powerful because he has Hail of Arrows. So you have a Yellow Turban character from the beginning with the Hail of Arrow ability, being able to solo entire armies by himself. So that's pretty much what He Yi's faction look like. Uh, you start out in a pretty intense area, Cao Cao to your north, Liu Chong's around here, Yuan Shu, Liu Biao, Sun Jian. So you are surrounded by some tough customers but it's going to be so easy to play him once you see uh, some of the approaches that I will use that this is really no problem. You end up killing all of them quite early. 
and really no one can stop you once you start spamming armies and have a decent economy and have Forge running everywhere. So we'll be showcasing this on Legendary Legendary 40 minute battle timers. Let's hop in there and China must be purified. Luoyang 我等寡不敌众Alrighty, so that's our flyby. Establish your power. He Yi, the tyrant, has thrown China into even greater chaos. Heaven has abandoned the Han. You must lead the Yellow Turbans to claim the Mandate of Heaven and restore peace. Yet the Han still has might, so you must not charge recklessly into the fray. No, we will exact do exactly that. Uh, we are outnumbered, so we must build our strength gradually, consolidate the nearby commanderies, defeating any Han loyalists who oppose you, endure their onslaught, then strike. A yellow sky will rise. Claim Han Empire territories and be wary of Liu Bao and his vassals. Our first mission is just to defeat any enemy force. We'll pick up a silver spear for us to use on our leader who uses a spear weapon. And we get some experience for Hoi. And we also have the typical get a reform, get the book of the people. So these are one of the three gold book items. This one's focused on population growth and providing encourage. Uh, it's decent enough to place onto He Yi himself for the authority bonus. The satisfaction is a little bit wasted, so you can put it on anyone you want. The cunning and authority stat, not really going to be super useful for you. Neither are combat stats. Typically, you love cunning, but we will actually run very few range units uh, using our strategy here, so it's not really going to be that useful. Encourage is nice, since our units will have very low morale, but that's something we can definitely overcome. Alright, so right off the bat, we have our leader with a decent retinue of Youxia. Very good unit, as I mentioned. Reason it being good is we are unbreakable. We have good charge for infantry. Over 100 is very high. We have decent attack rate with good spread damage, total 46. It's a little bit high on the base, but we can probably tolerate that. Because of the 15 point extra we get from He Yi's faction, we have 63% melee evasion, plus another 20% from their shield, 63% armor, plus 10%. Now the reason why we have a boost in armor is because of a glitch, really. He Man is also providing 10% armor which is own retinue, somehow faction-wide. This is unintentional because if we look here, his retinue is clearly, like the, the armor clearly is own retinue. It's not faction-wide. So I actually don't know how we're getting 10% armor on everyone. I might discover it here, but haven't had any luck so far. Yeah, from faction leader boost, I only see melee evasion I don't see any armor. Oh, he has it too. From what? Ah, oh, skills. Never mind. Because I had an army running with both of them with 10% armor. I'm like, how is he giving that 10% armor over? That was my one question heading into the thing. Now it's solved. So we do have a skill giving ourselves 10% armor, decent boost, 10% more from shield, 55% range block chance, 33 speed. It doesn't really matter. Another cool thing about them is they always come with guerrilla deployment. That's also a little nice thing to use if you want to close the gap on your enemies. Uh, but mainly, we'll keep this unit because it has unbreakable. And it's nice to have unbreakable unit uh, all the time, basically. It is half unit size. That is one weakness. 
Then we have People's Warband. This is another one of my favorite units because of the insane damage it can deal. Not a very defensive unit, but with our 10% armor boost and 15% evasion boost, it looks a lot better. 83 charge is no laughing matter. Very high base damage, which would do very poorly against highly armored units, like say, Yu Xia. But most enemy early game units don't have that much armor, so you can get away with this. Archers, very boring unit. And we do have a second army. He Man has his own army in Runan with a Militia of Virtue, an unbreakable unit as well. Yellow Sky Herald, another unbreakable unit, and the standard warriors. There are enemy armies to the south as well, and typically you might be tempted to fight this one first, but don't. Fight this one first. With He Man by himself, you get the spear, equip it on your leader, and then you get an easier time dueling him. And we can also check what items we start out with. This is quite a great haul because of the satisfaction, but even without this item, you see that we actually don't have satisfaction issues, mainly because He Yi has those two traits that we mentioned early on for 9 points. Decent amount of authority on top of that. We always start out with a bow, which is equipped it on He Man. A bronze spear for us and a pair of traits for He Man as well. No items extra here. Uh, the horse, as you can see, is spawned from that. So we don't start out with a lot of items. We get two weapons and one bow, and they're all equipped already. So no spare items. What else you have is all from your first turn spawn. So we'll fight this first battle to showcase our Hail Arrow ability. Uh, you could delegate, but don't because you're dragging the garrison in. And we can just solo it with our general, who, as I mentioned, have this Hail of Arrow ability. So let's hop in here. Alright, this is a very hard fight to mess up. Even if you end up fighting them with your units, you have two unbreakable units and a very powerful general. Really can't go wrong here. Wait for their reinforcement to clump up with the rest of their forces because we want maximum damage from each of our health arrow, which really functions like shotgun shots. Uh, we're just going to pick off this unit because it's free. Don't lose your horse. The range unit will not be firing at us because... Uh, okay, so he's going to have a stare down. Turn off your melee attack and start shooting at him one oh when he's not moving hopefully they will rotate with you don't worry they, they're gonna try to search you all right i say that's a pretty decent health arrow right here oh yeah look at that three units almost all wiped and when you have free time just shoot him like this with your bow you're firing uh, getting distracted and just shave some of his health off. He's not willing to duel you and while well, you're waiting for cooldowns and then when they're all clumped up like that, give them another shot. And if you want to chase, make sure you turn on melee. Chase these spear units when they're routing. Free kills. Look at all these dead. I'm waiting for cooldown. Clement's armor gives him 25% extra range damage. So using a bow on him is quite nice. All right, we have one more and there's no more spear units. So we could technically just run these guys over. The general is already routed. He took a lot of shots from that volley as well. So all it took is three shots of our, po uh, our not poison volley, but hell of arrows. And we took care of it. Um, you should try to kill as many as you can because there's the follow-up settlement battle. Uh, if you kill them now, you don't have to deal with them in the follow-up fights. But even if you do have a follow-up fight, you know, it's not going to be a problem for you given how easily you dispatch them in this first battle. So let's just claim victory. The experience will be shared among all your units. That's the only downfall. Alrighty. I actually take it back on the experience because this army is not programmed to be that first army, so it doesn't auto wipe, therefore the remaining units are still remaining, so all the experience only went to the unit that got kills, in this case, He Man. We got the spear. Our mission is to hire 
a captain retinue. Uh, it's the same one that we get with Huang Shao. We could do this. Uh, it would basically cost us about net a thousand plus, uh, simply because uh, if we keep doing missions, there's a lot of good missions that comes after this. Capture any settlements? That's going to happen right now. As we take Jiang Xia on turn one, we drag them in for a second fight, and we can just delegate this one here because everyone's getting recalled after this. Save us a bit of time, but you can fight this yourself if you want all the experience onto Herman himself instead of giving it to all these units. And here is our Occupy and Aid the Wounded. Nothing really happens here, it's more of what happens after you take the settlement. Supposedly, you're supposed to get a bonus. I mean, we are not even going to be able to see that bonus because we don't actually have any commerce income to boost. Uh, we have just upkeep. We don't own the entire commandery. Uh, but that's what the Occupy option is supposed to do. Uh, it's not a big deal. We're going to delete all these units. Now, if you want to do diplomacy, then maybe don't do that first. And as always, with Yellow Turbans, the only diplomatic partners we have are yeah, our fellow Yellow Turban members. And the only thing we can trade with them are items on turn one. So if there's something that you want from them, then do the trade before you do any fighting. In this case, and in most cases, you're not going to be doing any trading. Because usually the item's not good enough to worth trading more value for them. We'll recall him. And go back to this fight. This time I'll remember to equip the silver weapon that we got. I think we didn't do that for our Huang Shao run, but we were fine. Uh, looking at the character skill tree, which I obviously didn't pay close attention to with this 10% armor. We also start out with extra campaign movement range, which is great. He also has access to reach and flexibility, making him the ideal commanding general here. Uh, he also will get unbreakable from his skill tree, as well as recovery eventually. In terms of active skills, we have Judgment, which is a dueling or attacking skill that not only have huge splash damage with very short cooldown, but also reduces enemy melee attack by 50%. This ability is nuts. Very, very powerful. Because it's every 45 second cycle, but 30 second duration where the enemy will lose half their melee base damage. Then for your other ability here, all front, it's a range ability that has 75 active uh, effective range where all your allies will get this boost of immune to fatigue, extra armor, and extra melee evasion. And this includes yourself for 30 seconds, very long cooldown, but obviously very good uh, if you're spamming infantry, which we plan to do. And on this side, also very good for our spamming peasant ability is a passive act or passive well, ability with an uh, active range of 75 height. meters infinite duration where we just boost 15 points of morale and another 15 percent evasion so you can imagine the morale boost is huge for peasant units and the melee evasion just sweetens the deal because you have another 15 points so that's 30 points and if we activate this one it's 40 percent extra melee evasion for any all units that are 75 meters around you and then another 10 percent armor on top of this 10 percent armor so it's 20 percent armor immune to fatigue if you're doing infantry spam, it's going to be everyone's nightmare. You just want good damage on top of that because you have all the defensive abilities taken care of. And for the general, obviously, after this, we can get recovery. So he will become undying. Now, of course, we're not invisible like Huang Shao's faction. But guess what? Once Huang Shao's faction as the AI get wiped by other AI factions, he will come into your recruitment pool. You grab him by late game, put him into your court, and your faction will also become invisible, plus all the other nice bonuses we have been covering. So it's going to be smooth sailing in the early game and smooth sailing in the late game. And we're going to be jumping into this fight just because we want to get as much experience as we can. And we also want to keep casualty a bit low here because we are going to get an army ready to do some serious fighting. So let's hop into this fight. Alrighty, so we load up in here. You can see that uh, Yosha has guerrilla deployment. Doesn't really matter. Um, in order to get as much experience on him as possible, it'd be even better if you can hide your units, which might be a little difficult because there's not a lot of trees. There we go. And we can just prevent him asking us to duel. We'll ask him 
This is the designed first battle, so he will always agree even though you now have a silver spear, which means he really has no shot. We can activate our defensive ability, we can have his offensive attack and also deal massive damage and just slap him around, kill him pretty quickly, and then we'll move on to his units, which are trying to find our units. If you leave your units in the field... Oh, we spared him. We must have the kind trait. Yeah, we probably do. It's fine. He can live. Smash them as well. You can use this in dueling or outside of dueling. Doesn't matter. Loop around, chase until he routes. Uh, you can farm kills if you want, or you can just go after the next one. Really no difference here. It's not going to last that much longer anyways. He's actually not picking up army loss, which is fine. After we run him over a couple times, he's going to pick up army loss. Defense, smash. But nothing beats them as running them over, so... Just use our horse to our advantage and wait till they route. And it's just a chase down at this point. And we barely took any damage and all the experience went on our leader so we can get those nice skills a little bit faster. And all the missions are going to grant him experience as well. Alrighty. It's also kind of sad that Zhaozi, who is right here, uh, he's one of the two uh, who are in charge of starting Twin Tian for Cao Cao. Uh, unfortunately, he has to die on turn 1. I guess I can release him. If you don't capture him, he's dead. He's level 1, you duel him, it's over. Because of our kindness, he lives. Lucky guy. But then that happens because he's designed wipe, so I think he dies. I don't, I don't know if the release will put him back into the court or not. Doesn't matter, that's something for the Han to worry about. We're gonna disband every unit except for our Yosia because it's really nice to get a, you know, unbreakable unit. And he's already rank 4, and the stats just off the charts. And we'll move our army towards this iron mine. And we'll have He Man, who was recalled, join him next turn. And we'll start recruiting. Our initial control of Runan has us a blacksmith, which is the forge. 80% or 80 points of industry and 10% industry boost plus 10% replenishment and then we get a you know state workshop which is not the ideal start you would prefer an inn simply because that will also grant you satisfaction but thankfully our traits are giving us quite a bit of satisfaction and we also locked into a concubine if we were to use it but since these are random I'm not going to use those I use the spear because you always get the spear from the first battle and that's pretty much all we have to do. We just have to pick a reform. I typically stick to getting money early. We don't need any units, so all the unit unlock are meaningless to us. Population, we really don't need another 3k, given that we have plenty of growth on our passive background. Of course, the more the merrier. Uh, campaign movement is nice as well. Uh, decreased cost, not a big deal. And most of the other things are unit satisfaction. We have our background trait. Character experience probably second, and then probably uh, campaign movement, unless we tier up, which actually happens quite fast for us, because we have some uh, good options into picking characters, which we will also showcase. Uh, we could build. If you don't want to do this mission, where you have to recruit a Yellow Turban Spear Captain, just because it's such a lame mission, then definitely use the money and start upgrading your settlement to a small city so you can upgrade this to tier 2 for 20% replenishment because right now if we look at it, our base is super high. 28% with nothing because our faction has a, a base of 20%. It's always at least 20% and you get all sorts of other bonus on top and just kind of re becomes ridiculous. I mean, this case is actually kind of interesting. 2%, 10%, 12%. So they're giving us a base of 16 here. Oh no, it's giving us 14, 10 from building, 2 from population, 2% from military supplies. Hmm. I've never seen his faction go below 20. But I guess right now it's telling me it's 14%. Anyhow, um, it's much higher. By reference, when you played as Huang Shao with all the invisible units, 
his base re uh, replenishment was around 4%. So the difference is still massive, especially since we have all these forges up on turn one. All right, in our case, I will do the missions. Um, so I'm not going to build the building. So we'll continue here. Alrighty, so we're going to get into the iron mine. We're going to recruit Clement for free. And we're going to get the spear Captain Renu, which features a lot of these peasant warriors. Now, they're not the best unit in the world, obviously. They're the cheapest unit in the world. But look at the damage. In the early game, that damage is outstanding. 35 entirely on base. And then you have the spear variant of the same peasant unit with 34 entirely on armor piercing with eight still on base, but uh, much a little bit less attack rate. But still, these units are very nice. Uh, the Another factor that's really good for this unit is it's purple. So we get the 15% melee evasion on it. And it has really high charge that the spear units do not have. So these are your standstill, let the enemy cavalry run into you type of peasant spearmen. These are swarm the enemy, doesn't matter who they have, just ram them into the enemy type of peasant warriors holding holes and pickaxes and all sorts of weapon. We're just using this to get our mission. When we get a better general, we'll replace this retinue by firing them. Uh, but now for the rest of our army, it's peasant warrior spam time. Literally peasant warrior on every single general for every single army for every single retinue. Uh, because they bring tremendous value for you and they're so cheap look at how much it costs us for that upkeep for he man's entire retinue 450 it costs more for he Yi because we kept that special unit there um, but essentially they're gonna be super cheap to maintain we can have multiple armies of this and you might think you know what good is this army well let liu bell bring his full stack and we'll show you how good this army is uh, but in the meantime, we're going to have to sit here and recover a little bit. And uh, we can just end turn here as we don't have enough money to actually upgrade any of our buildings, which is a bit sad. But that's why we didn't spend the 2000 last turn on the building upgrade or else we can't get this full army out. And they heal up incredibly fast because of the mustering bonuses that we enjoy. So they'll be ready in two turns. We can even move them next turn because they'll be ready so fast. Alrighty, we finished this mission. Uh, you can get rid of them later uh, when you have another general. Right now, we don't really have a good one. Well, that is sitting in our pool, uh, maintaining a full 20 army, a 20 unit will get us an item. We did that automatically. And our new mission is to research reform for the gold book and to reach balanced our next tier. Looking at our generals, we finally leveled up and we're going to pick up this skill first one with the people so we can grant 15 points of morale to our units and with this 15 passively in battle our peasant warriors will have 40 points of morale and become ex they're always expendable so even if one route no one else will lose morale that's the beauty of them even though they have low morale you will never have chain routing which is what usually you know does armies in because a friendly unit routing next to you is gonna hit your morale and basically everyone will just route in a chain. Here, let's say the enemy, you know, wipe out half of your peasant's health and this guy routes. Everyone else still fighting fresh. That's a normal thing for them. And in this case, they have 40 points of morale once you do have one with the people and then they will have, let's see how much uh, evasion. So with the 15 right now, they're at 28. So their base is 13, but they get 15 from the faction 15 from this skill, and then another 10 from this skill. So we're looking at 40 more. 53% melee evasion, 84 charge, 35 base attack. The attack, it's good. It's not great, obviously. And then when this is active, we have 27% armor. So that's a great unit, right? You're looking at something that's close to Pearl Dragon, but fractions, fractions of the cost. And you can spam it from turn one on everyone. It's really nuts. Um, we're going to move our armies here aggressively. I'm interested in grabbing none from uh, Tai Mall here. And with our money, we can start upgrading. Because our goal is to get as many maxed out forges and in buildings as we can. As you can see, lack of purpose 
is starting to do him in. But he's really not a great battlefield general. He's great on the bench with insight. If you need him to defend somewhere, you can use him with recovery. He can become unbreakable, so he can become a looping general with recovery. Uh, but right now he's providing us a pretty nice 10% you know, research rate, which is why scholars are my preferred class. Uh, we will have assignment once we do tier up where we can pick new characters and I always pick scholars. And in case you don't know how you pick, you get three choices of uh, frugality, humidity, and compassion. Um, I believe frugality is always a veteran, humility is always a scholar, and compassion is always a healer. And that's how you can pick what class of characters you get from those assignments. All right, we moved into position here. Let's continue. Alrighty. In spring, we also get Zhong, who is our burn officer. We see him in our Huang Shao campaign as well for the guide. And you always want to recruit everyone you get. Doesn't matter their trait, doesn't matter how good or bad they are. Like if you can get a couple of skills, they're worth holding on to. And in this case, a burn officer as well. And we'll be marching towards him. And that's really all we can do. Uh, none of the buildings are ready, so let's just continue. All right, we got our reform, and that also means we get 10% additional post-battle loot. Um, you can definitely, as I say, give this item to him. We can get encouraged, which is actually more morale for people around you for a farther boost, and also the authority will also help with satisfaction and also morale boost. And we're just going to go to war. We don't need to fight this. We can just delegate this. I'm almost wiped. Now the reason why we went west rather than what the game told us to take Han territory is because Han territories are not aggressive. Even if Xun Yu's army is here, he's not going to attack you. So there's nothing to worry about. He's just getting chased off by Liu Chong. These are your buffer states to buy you time from people like Cao Cao. And these are your immediate threats. Wipe them out as fast as you can, so they don't become bigger threats. That's the goal here. Now once we clear this out, we can switch him off because we now have a suitable third general with our burn officer here. And, you know, it's a no-brainer what unit we're going to use here. There we go. And for them, it's super fast replenishment plus mustering, but for them, base 20, right? The high military supply, 4% max from that, and then 16%. It's technically 14% base plus 2% being inside. So minimum 20% is usually how I think about it. And everyone's going to be full heal after like a few turns. Even the ones that don't get full heal, they're fine. We're going to try to take this. Sometimes Sun Jian gets there before us. Uh, Sometimes you can get there before them, depending on what Liu Bao does. Ideally, Liu Bao will move his army into this area very soon. He should come from like here because he just conquered that. And we can fight his full stack around here. That's the ideal state. Uh, but you're not always going to get that. Let's pick another reform. We mentioned we want character experience. And we can continue from here. Alrighty. We get more characters. Doesn't matter if their traits are bad. Like Vayne's a terrible trait. Hold on to him. He's a brewer. He starts with insight. That's 10% research rate. And not only that, for every yellow turban general, they give you enlightenment points from their skill tree as well. So we reached our next tier and we get a few more missions about assignments because now we actually have assignments. They want us to build certain buildings. Uh, we're not going to really do the building part, but you get two assignments on this first level up and you want to definitely attract talent. Now you can only do these in capitals and we only have one capital or else you will spam them everywhere. Uh, but just send your guys out to attract talent and then send someone else out to do the construction to have this ready so you can have cheaper and faster construction uh, the very next turn to get this to a small city actually. And we'll also showcase when new talents come how to pick uh, which one to get. All right, we don't have to really care about these bonuses as we have ready showcase. We just heal plenty fast. Uh, we cannot reach that in one turn, so we're going to just hang on to right here. 
And we will strike that next turn unless Sun Jian gets there before us, which is a possibility. It's just nice to get the capital piece so that we can build our forge building in there. And then we have 20% extra replenishment here, 20% here. We'll come back to Jiangxia. The problem is level 5. It takes so long to siege it out because we don't have siege weapons right now. Uh, we can beat it. It's just that sieging it takes extra turn. So no rush. He's not going to get super aggressive either. So let's continue here. All right, so this is our first dilemma, and this usually is the standard um, setup. Uh, I haven't seen any variations from this, basically. So we get a bunch of other missions, all nice stuff, like incredible amount of money just to keep growing and uh, get a unit that requires a later reform, get better items for our faction to give Heman. There's going to be continuous missions like these that will eventually get to the gold po item. I've never played Hei's faction to the end, but assuming the design should work like that because that gold item is in game but you can't get it unless you're yellow turban and it's designed for Heman so I'm assuming it's going to be part of Hei's faction uh, but I know a lot, not a lot of people get those so maybe it's just not in there and more missions to get 8 and there's also to get you know, 12 all sorts of building being asked of us all sorts of number of units but just so many things right the missions are endless the experience for Hei like the faction is so easy to play, especially if you can snowball. Challenge for five commanderies. Like, look at this. Five commanderies, eight commanderies, 12 commanderies. Build this building. Build that building. And look how much money they're going to give us. 5,000, 25,000, 12,000, 8,000, 8,000. And then if we can get two armies up, which are super cheap for us, we can get... 12,000 experience point for He Yi and also a Gun, silver Gun. And then 4,000. This is this is going to take a while because this re, uh, reform is quite late into the tree. And then just tearing up. Right. And the reason why we teared up so suddenly after recruiting someone is because not only do these give us 10%, two enlightenment points. Right. Two enlightenment points on every single Yellow Turban skills. So the more character we have, you know, the more enlightenment points we have. So everyone you see. Doesn't matter their class, doesn't matter their trait, just just hire them. Character salaries will build up, sure, but your armies are so cheap that it doesn't really hurt you. And here's Liu Bao's army. Very scary, right? In all campaigns, when you're playing Sun Jian, when you're playing anyone else, this army in the early game is the most difficult army to deal with. Two unique generals, family trait between the generals and friendship traits between generals, making them get boost. You have elite infantry of Jin. There's six of them. There's plenty of cavalry, including upgraded melee cav. And you have fancy, um, you know, Jama Jian unit for melee infantry as well. Overall, just pretty scary. And our dilemma is not really how to deal with this. Is do we want this city or do we want to kill them first? That's my dilemma. Because usually I choose to just kill them now. Um, but... I think the smarter play is to take this. We're not at war with Sun Jian. They can't fight us. So if you take this, it's free land. Liu Bao, the worst he can do is take this. And then you go back and kill him. You actually heal higher because, you know, you'll spend a turn here and you're not going to lose much taking this small level 2 town. But just in case you don't believe me, watch this. Who wins a delegate battle, despite inferior force? We win. Peasants are broken. Goodbye, elite army. Goodbye, Liu Bell. It's not rated very well, and we lost a lot of units, right? We capture Huang Zhong. You execute. You take their item, you execute them. You're not going to keep them. There's no point. Pick up money. He's on the run. Looks like, you know, our army's spent, right? Almost there's nothing here left. And we leveled up here, and he should pick up recovery for himself to heal. The other two ability, Binding Fury, Surprise, surprise Attack is good. But Binding Fury is kind of useless on him. I don't think he really needs it. But Surprise Attack... It basically gives nearby unit stock for 60 seconds, and then you gain speed, you also gain damage, and you also cause fear. So bunch all your peasants up together, 
Give them a defensive boost when you need to. Give everyone stock. Run up to the enemy with your high charge. Deal your damage and uh, cause fear. Excellent. Chase. And fight them here. You have the upper hand. Uh, we'll beat them down right here. Uh, mainly because you have Unbreakable Unit here on the field. So you're not going to route from any sort of weird army loss from, you know, right off the bat. As long as he stays alive, your army will never just randomly route. He has recovery, so he will be full health in this battle. Their generals are spent. He's executed. Even if he's not executed, he will be spent, right? Because that delegate fight would put him at low health. You have four charges of Hail of Arrow. And your peasant unit are still capable of fighting. They're in bad shape, I know, but your generals are not in bad shape. You have a burn officer that can reduce enemy range, uh, which is not even going to come into a factor. But let's go into battle here and show them who's boss. Alrighty. Of course, you're not forced to fight this. Like, at this time, Nobel's army is spent. Like, the only benefit of this is making sure he's completely wiped from the field. And we, we just want to hide away uh, in the back. You guys don't have to spread out so far. It's not like you guys have a lot of units left. And for this guy, he has guerrilla deployment. I would place him like somewhere really, really off into the corner of the map. He's your guarantee that your army would just not all route away. Unfortunately, we don't have recovery yet, uh, so we can't heal alongside He Man. So He Man's going to do all the damage for us. He has a, quite a nice splash damage as well with a morale hitter, so that's also good. And He Man's gonna go use his Hail of Arrows. We're on offense, we have to go find them. But because they're on March, there's no timer. This is their second battle on March, so they get wiped if they lose this fight, therefore the game is not going to give them a defender advantage. Therefore we have all the time in the world to go full health, line up a beautiful shot, fire, back off, heal up, keep rinse and repeat until we kill them. So yeah, generally, basically, um, yellow turbans, the skills are just too powerful. Uh, they're not on the same level as Han generals, and you gift one of them the best, but one of the best active abilities from the Han roster, and you end up with a situation like this where, you know, you just can't lose. He's just gaining health right here, standing here, went from yellow to orange to green, and go to full, and the enemy is not going to react to us too aggressively. The cavalry, we can hit them. We're not afraid, because you know, we outrun them later, and then we just go heal once they're dead. He has the bow, which does a lot of damage, but he doesn't have a lot of ammo. Come on, you want to come closer to me? I want to get a good hell of arrow, but the cavalry is going to keep harassing me. I want to get one of them, and just kill him off. Yeah, you don't realize that I actually want to fight you. It's better me fighting you than my poor peasants. Uh, slightly off angle, but that's probably as best as we can aim that. There's one nice cavalry unit gone. And of the generals, I think we definitely want to kill Liu Bao first. Just because their family, so one of them is going to heal after the fight. Might as well be Liu Qi rather than Liu Biao. Not that Liu Biao is strong. Um, technically, Liu Qi with his weapon will be stronger, but... I just don't want to deal with unique generals. Who's... Eh, he has no item. They both have no item. There's a chance they could get item depending on what they get on their first turn. We still have two more of those and a bow that we can snipe real about if we want. We just want to kill the cavalry off. Look at our health. It's growing. It's not actually dropping. Alright, we don't want to tangle up with a spear, so get off here. And it's really nice that there is no time limit for this. Yeah, come fight me. OK, 
Okay, I don't want to fight the spear. Knock me off my horse, that's bad. Ooh, we got a double cast there, because the first one got interrupted a little bit. So we actually got a couple extra bursts. It rarely happens. You can't control it. It's just the enemy interfere with you a little bit and then back off and you still have the count. We just got lucky. But we didn't need that luck, you know. It, it's over here. Just stand here and fight. Look at your health. You're totally fine. We are called the most powerful for a reason. It has nothing to do with Master of the Universe, but <laughs> the developers definitely have fun with that one. I'll snipe him. Ah, he has that. 30 seconds. Old man, you really want to fight? Right, I believe you're 30 seconds up. He's dead. We got an angry son. Gets the full heal. Does he want to duel? Ah, I wish he wanted to duel. That's extra experience for us. He might. Yep, he might change his mind. So this is actually where we can actually get Kui to come help. I think I'll make it here in time, actually. I'll give him 15% extra melee evasion, 25% extra melee evasion, plus 10% armor. We'll go to... Over 100% melee evasion. This Hemen was a reason why they had to nerf melee evasion, where 100% you don't actually dodge 100% of the shots, because it was so easy for him to pick up over 100% of melee evasion. <laughs> and it just becomes incredibly unfair. And I'm not here to die with you. You you kill him. You you can do it. All right, that 10% wore off. But yeah, we're just not taking damage. We're still healing. Go after a range unit here. Alright boss, how about you use one of your active abilities? And, uh, there we go. And Liu Bell's done! Now our you know peasants are gonna heal up and we can march on and destroy the rest of his land. Alrighty. Wasn't hard at all. And because of the heroic victory, we capture Liu Bao, we pick up... Not his bow? What kind of logic is this? It's fine, it's gonna go on to his son. Who we will also kill when we march to his capital. Now the downfall of this play is that Lu Su here is gonna end up picking up Nan, and we have to go to war with them to pick it back up. Which is not a big issue, but the other play would be we march on that directly, take it, and then come back and retake the livestock, which I think is a better play because you end up building your forge faster and your army will be sitting here with a nice level up forge. Back over here, we'll do that. Uh, when we do the track character, the event might not pop away, you know, but it sometimes can pop right within a turn, but sometimes it will take a while and sometimes it might not even pop up at all uh, during the period that you have it. So now we can just sit, sit here, heal up, Three turns, march to Xiangyang. He'll have another army ready. We have 20% in open field. Like, it's just ridiculous. We'll be back in battle shape. One turn, two turn, three turn, right, essentially. And, uh, yeah. And with Heman, it doesn't even matter if we're in battle shape or not. And we're just picking up rosters of units. None of these really require much of upgrade. We're only interested in getting this to a small city, put in an inn, and get this to tier two. And once you see that you can have... Um, 1,350 income, that's enough for a second stack. 
So while you might have seen, you know, how well this delegates, and when you are faced with some better units, I mean, Nobel's army is top tier. Let's be real. That's a good mid-tier army from the AI that you probably won't see any better armies from until like 50 turns. It's very rare for the AI to have a better army than that in the early game. But if they do, then fight them with two of these armies. You still pay less than the AI pays, and you will still beat them. That's just the facts. So let's continue. Wow, this is this is the earliest Liu Bei Confederation I've ever seen. Uh, the AI triggered it way earlier. Liu Bei's death is usually the trigger, and uh, Liu Bei is here, which actually makes it easier for us because Liu Bei has an army cap limit early on, and he can't actually put that many army onto the field. And you just be marching over there to take free land from him that you can't do anything. Just declare war on him. What's he going to do to you? And after you control Xiangyang, just keep going. Uh, most likely, Yuan Shu would take this. And you would just kill him. Take his land. Kill Liu Chong. Take his land. Kill Cao Cao. Take his land. And uh, summon that second army. Once you take Xiangyang, you have enough money to summon the second army. And just keep pushing. Uh, he's still here, a little bit annoying, and the fact that you lost this is also a little bit annoying. Um, but I guess we can just focus on one thing at a time. This just takes too long and doesn't bring us enough value to kind of focus Jiangxia early on. Huangzhu is not very aggressive, so it doesn't really matter. So that's kind of the gameplay. Um, I don't think I need to show anything else. You're ready, you know, on your way uh, to being great here with He Yi. And you get only that much stronger once Huang Shao gets wiped. Because once you pick him up, uh, your faction becomes invisible, highly uh, melee evasion uh, infantry army. And you can just kind of overwhelm people with the most basic unit in the game that you can grant additional powers thanks to your faction mechanic. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And we'll see you guys next week with Gongdu before moving on to Mandate of Heaven. We're going to stay in the Three Kingdom time period first. Eight princes, I'm going to neglect them a little bit, not going to cover them first despite them coming out before Mandate of Heaven. Uh, we'll stick with these and then I'll do eight princes somewhere uh, in between uh, the episodes. I'll find a good time for them, basically. All right, see you guys then. Bye.